All right there, everyone. Prime Minister Viktor Orban throws down a challenge to French President Macron as more and more European nations begin standing behind Hungary. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. If this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. We analyze current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. And so let me encourage you to support that work by clicking on the Patreon link below where you can get all kinds of benefits that are solely for our Patreon supporters. And of course, smack that bell and subscription button. It'll be a privilege and a pleasure to have you as a regular part of this channel. All right, we got some smackdown going on here. A bit of a quick backdrop first. Uh, last Wednesday, the European Parliament took the unprecedented step to initiate what's called the Article 7 process against the nation of Hungary, which if it goes through, if it goes all the way, uh, it will have effectively stripped Hungary of its voting rights in the EU Assembly. The article has never been previously invoked. 448 Democrats voted in favor of the measure, 197 voted against it, 48 abstained. Uh, it was a very controversial vote, largely because the EU Charter states explicitly, at least as I understand it, it does state explicitly that any vote like this needs to be ratified by a two-thirds majority of all members present. With 693 members present, 448 is not two-thirds. Uh, what they did is they didn't count those who abstained. And so this is obviously being loudly denounced by Hungary. But now leaders from other nations are coming out and giving their total support uh, to Viktor Orban and the nation of Hungary. And in so doing, I think they're representing nothing less than a mass backlash against the globalist policies of the EU. The first one to throw their support behind Orban was, of course, Poland. Poland is itself going through the sanctions process with the European uh, Parliament. A European Commission triggered Article 7 proceedings against Poland uh, last December for reasons very similar to what they're doing here with Hungary. And so it's no surprise, given, of course, both their thousand-year historical friendship and their mutual attacks by the EU, it's no surprise that Poland is standing arm-in-arm -arm with Hungary. Poland has officially adopted Viktor Orban's position that each EU member state has a sovereign right to carry out the internal reforms that it considers appropriate. What happens with the judiciary of a nation, what happens with its demographic makeup in terms of immigration rates, what happens with its traditions, its, the celebration of its values and customs, all of that will be decided by the sovereign citizens of a sovereign nation. It's not for a bunch of bureaucratic despots and to decree from Brussels. And then you had Matteo Savini, the Deputy Prime Minister of Italy. He came out, he publicly blasted what's called the Sargentini Report, which is uh, the whole basis for the sanctions against Hungary. He thinks it's nothing more than a cheap political act instigated by a bunch of left-wing bureaucrats that have no desire to change. They just want to hold on to their own power. And then he made this great quip. He said, I'm convinced that in a few months' time, we'll find ourselves governing Europe together with Viktor Orban, <laughs> referring to the upcoming European parliamentary elections in May of 2019. Now, it's been pointed out that both Orban and Salvini are basically implementing the same immigration policies. Orban cut immigration by 99% through the building of a border fence. Salvini cut it primarily Libyan migration by 87% by closing Italian ports. So both men are trying to save their nations and indeed European civilization together. And they're obviously, they have developed a, a kindred spirit there. Next to jump on board in defense of Hungary is the Czech Republic, uh, led by Prime Minister Andrej Babis, who called Orban one of his closest friends and allies and denounced the European Parliament for its vote to sanction uh, Hungary. Now, what's interesting here is that a uh, number of Czech members of the European Parliament did, in fact, vote in favor for the sanctions. And so Babis has said that he's going to confront them directly about this. It's very interesting. Uh, also, Austria is divided here. This is a, Their right-wing coalition is made up of uh, Chancellor Sebastian Kurz's People's Party and Heinz Christian Straka's Nationalist Freedom Party. Kurtz wants Hungary punished for what he sees as Orban's attempt to manipulate the rule of law in his favor, while Straka wants to see Orban defended. Now, given 
that Poland, Italy, and the Czech Republic have already pledged to veto any attempt at punishing Hungary. This may be some kabuki political theater here. Austria is currently in the role of the EU presidency. So Kurt seems to be just kind of playing good cop. He's towing the line here on behalf of the members of the European Parliament, while Straka is making sure Hungary and the Visegrad Four know that a major partner in Austria's ruling coalition supports them. Now, in the midst of all this, Orban has actually thrown down a challenge to the French President Emmanuel Macron. The Telegraph is reporting that Orban issued a behind-the-scenes provocation against the French president, basically saying that the upcoming elections in the European Parliament in May, they basically boil down to a duel between him and Macron. <laughs> okay, Orban basically said, hey, buddy, it's you and me. It's you versus me. Merkel's out. I destroyed her through the whole immigration issue. I came out on top. She fell apart. Now I'm coming after you. This May, the European parliamentary elections are coming down to globalism versus nationalism. And we nationalists are going to win. I think that's why Salvini came out and said that he and Orban would be ruling Europe in a uh, matter of months. In other words, nationalism and patriotism are going to win big in the upcoming elections. And these uh, the days of corporatist globalists ruling the European Parliament are coming to an end. Now, to be fair, Macron actually came out and responded to Orban's challenge, and he, <laughs> he agreed with it. Macron basically agrees that the elections coming up are coming down to what he called a nationalist versus a progressive vision for Europe. And then he went on to say this. This is Macron. He said he wasn't going to give an inch to nationalist sentiments and those who defend hate speech. And I am most certainly their opponent. <laughs> I'm not going to give an inch to those mean nationalists who defend, they actually defend hate speech. They defend hate speech. And I'm, boy, Macron has to learn how to dish it out a bit better than that. If that's all he's got. I don't know how many globalists will be left in the European Parliament after May. I think they'll be too embarrassed. But Now, all of this underscores, in my view, all of this underscores the importance of a process we've talked about before in this channel known as internationalizing the nationalist right. Internationalizing the nationalist right. The various nationalist right parties have, of course, focused primarily on their own local and national elections, but they all recognize that transnational politics, creating alliances between the different nationalist parties, are in many ways just as equally important because the ultimate adversary in all of this is, of course, globalization in the EU, and globalization in the EU are by definition transnational. And so virtually all of the national right organizations out there are mobilizing beyond just the national level, creating networks, like-minded organizations uh, with other uh, countries. Those networks are coming in quite handy right now for Viktor Orban. I think what we're going to find from this point forward is that nationalist populist governments like the ones in Hungary and Italy and Poland, they're going to begin to get even bolder in their reforms and their consolidation of nationalist populist and traditionalist policies in their respective nations, all the while strengthening their coalitions with one another in order to thwart any Brussels-based attempt to stop them, which in many respects will have effectively neutered Brussels from enforcing its will on European member nations. It could be very, very fascinating to watch, especially in light of the upcoming uh, elections. I said in a previous video, I really don't know what the European Parliament was thinking when they were doing this with Hungary. All they seem to have done is galvanize the nationalist populist parties throughout Europe to rally around, around Hungary, making Viktor Orban even more popular. So I think it was a huge miscalculation. It may end up costing them dearly in May's election. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on things and how they develop. But in terms of the challenge that's been issued by Orban to Macron, if Macron's response is any indicator, globalists are in for one very disappointing election. <laughs> 
As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Patreon link below. Become a monthly supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of awesome conservative trends so that you, you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.